in February, I am highlighting marriages because it is the love month. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned every week for new episodes. Hi, my name is Dr. Errol DeVoe. And I'm Jackie DeVoe. Thank you all for being a part of the love series. So my first question is, how long have y'all been married? Ladies first. 44 and a half years. Okay, congratulations. And we dated five <laughs> years before marriage. Okay, okay. So, so y'all been in each other's life for about 50 years. Oh, okay, okay. So let, do y'all remember the, the dates of um, when y'all started dating and then like the date when y'all got married well, hopefully you remember that one but the date the five year date y'all remember that date the original date I, I don't oh okay yes the year maybe yes the year okay the date. <laughs> that was just a little trivia question for the people <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay um so this is a marriage series and it's all about love and just um being you know in marriage and just seeing what it's about and just highlighting it for people to learn so we can talk about it and keep having these conversations so i wanted to know why is marriage so important and why should people get married well i'll start in this case uh, marriage is important because it is important that no man be alone, all women. It's a based on our thought process based biblically. So therefore, and I often say no man is an island. So you can't do everything on your own and you need what's known as a help me, a help mate. Would you like to answer? I agree. Um, there's many things that come into play you know, I don't want to say the man is stronger physically than the woman, but I find that it is good having a, a husband with strong strength, strong ideas, and plans and goals that we both can uh, work at and enjoy. So that's why I think it's important to have marriage. Because it has that stick to it that's with it. And a part two that you said? Yes. And why should people get married? Well, that still goes into the first part of what I said. Mm -hmm. is that, you know, you can't do everything by yourself. And, you, and it's a good thing because you don't want to grow old alone. You need someone that can uh, keep you warm at night and because you can't keep yourself warm. So that's important. And so it's definitely good to have someone that you can bounce things off of that in, in terms of being able to uh, have that one individual for sure that will always have your back. Mm -hmm. The question again for me. Why should one get married? Okay. I find it, along with the, <clears throat> my husband, feel about the biblical aspect of marriage. I find, in addition, I have found in my marriage, I have a friend, a lover, and a lasting companion. And I, those are the three things that are very helpful to me and, and, and a reason I'm happy that I'm married. Okay. Um, being that y'all have been married for so long and y'all dated before, what do you all feel the biggest challenges are when it comes to being married? with us it probably had been uh, the financial part because we had so many goals and um, 
a lot of my goals had been established by the time I had met my husband and he was getting out of the Marine Corps and had large plans in medicine. Mm -hmm. So it began to be uh, a big stretch for us. But because of our faith, we mm -hmm. stepped out on it. And even though the somewhat difficult times, we prayed and we, God always brought us through. So while it might have been difficult, we could still see the light. So, and it's that way even now. Can you dive a little bit deeper? So are you saying like um, you graduated and you were like in your career? Is that what it is that like when y'all met? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And so then he was leaving his career and starting a new career. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. He was leaving the 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 military part uh -huh. to venture on out into the the first had first goal he had was pharmacy. Mm -hmm. And then he went on to dental school. And so and we married after he graduated from pharmacy school. Mm. Sat there, we got married, and we started a family immediately. So, uh, it was some difficult lean times there. Okay. So I'd like to rehash some of that. Mm -hmm. In that, we met after I got out of the Marine Corps. Okay. And she will often tell people I told her I wasn't ready to get married, <laughs> and because. Mm -hmm. I had my goals set, mm -hmm. and I did not want to not accomplish my goals mm -hmm. without having the, uh, if you will, for lack of a better description, distractions, I wanted to stay focused. Mm -hmm. And she uh, bought into it and stuck by me, and so <clears throat> she had finished her, I was working as a social worker, mm -hmm. so I proceeded to go to the pharmacy school. Mm -hmm. Once I finished pharmacy school, mm -hmm. we got married, had children, and I was working as a pharmacist, but I still had long range goals, so we ended up packing up, going to our university in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. We finished the dental school, and while being a student I also worked as a pharmacist to so mm. maintain our domicile and then obviously once I finished dental school I did the residency in the military and proceeded to oh. travel that way and then once we got in Kentucky then that's when I was led to purchase a practice and then we stayed in that practice for 25 years. Okay, okay, he said, let's clear it up. <laughs> but I guess I, I was trying to ask because, um, like, people uh, kind of, you know, have goals. How you're saying you don't want to get distracted, I don't want to get distracted. But I know in a previous um, episode that I did, they were talking about sometimes you have to go with the woman's goal, then you have to go with the man's goal. Or sometimes you got to follow, like, different people's uh, career trajectories when it happens. So that's why I was trying to figure out kind of, like, um, did she kind of follow you with your careers because she was saying she was already in it or y'all kind of like came together or whatever So like the way that you explained it kind of like shows the timeline Now also so, yeah. <laughs> that's the timeline but there's a caveat to what you're saying Because uh -huh. before I went back to dental school mm -hmm. uh, She had an ambition to uh, create her own okay. consulting yeah. mm -hmm. And I said okay We'll do that mm -hmm. and and see how that takes <coughs> off. Mm -hmm. And so she proceeded to. I can let her tell the story mm -hmm. better because she went to talk to. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. The uh, at that point, when he finished pharmacy school and was working, we talked about the uh, uh, my professional per mm -hmm. personal professional goals. But that at that time was to uh, start a private practice mm. in counseling, uh, social work. With, with my social work degree, MSW, I was going to get my license and start in my 
plans to uh, offer private practice. And what I did, I was doing my homework, I started doing assessments. And one of the things that really triggered me was when I talked with the judge, because I thought I could get patients uh, referred to me through the court system, which I thought was a lasting agency that would be around. And I could get uh, uh, clients through that system. Mm -hmm. It wasn't very popular for people to pay for counseling mm -hmm. that they needed. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. though they know they need it, they wouldn't come. So, but what I found out after talking to, especially one of the judges told me, even though people are referred to those counseling agencies, and, and, and it's paid for by the state, they don't show to up for appointments a lot of the times, but most of the times, he, he said. So therefore, the clinician doesn't get paid mm -hmm. unless they show up to the appointments. Mm -hmm. And I began to think about that because I was going to be leaving a you know, I was working as a school social worker at the time. I was leaving benefits and everything to go into <laughs> private practice. Yes. And by that time, I had a family <laughs> and a husband because he was letting me go on and set up my practice before he had considered to go on and back into school into dentistry. So if that was going to work for me, we were going to stay put because we had purchased a home and everything by that time. So. I got to thinking about that, and in long range, it didn't look as promising for me. Mm -hmm. And I had once told him, I said, well, I'll, well, the children and I will stay behind, and you go on to dental school, because he had been accepted in a school in Florida as well. And he's, his philosophy was, and I really stand by it, and then, if one go, all go. So he wanted to keep the family together, and I agreed with that. And since my area didn't look so promising for me at the time, I went along with him uh, to proceed, proceed with uh, the dental school aspect. Did that include the fact that the judge told you that the people may not, you said they won't pay, but didn't the judge have some input into that? He just all pointed out that even though the state may pay for it, the people do, there are too many no-shows mm -hmm. for the private cl clinician to get paid by the state. And they only could get paid if they showed up to the appointments. And at, during that time, the records for no-shows were, for, for follow-up referrals was low. And I didn't want to take that chance in setting up, because it takes a lot to set up a practice a lot of income. So if I set it up and I'm not going to have the proceeds coming in, possibly not have them coming in on a regular basis. And looking at the statistics of the no-shows was important to see that that was not going to be too lucrative at that time, you know. Mm. You know, you never know how something is going to work out, but when you're staring at the numbers there, that gives you some idea of what you're getting into. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, do you have anything to add about your biggest challenge? The biggest challenge of... Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge of marriage? Marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the... I would say, I don't know if this is part of the next question, one of the most important things, I would say, is, is love. Mm -hmm. It is the biggest thing. Because love covered the multitudes of sin. It's not to say that we're going to be sinning, but if any man say that they don't sin, they're lying, the truth isn't in them. So you got to realize that we, all, we aren't perfect and we're going to have challenges. Mm -hmm. And stress is one of them, but there's good stress and there's bad stress. And good stress, some uh, well, it gives you a purpose as well. There's um, a term for good stress is you stress, E U S T R E S S. -S.
So that is a stress that benefits you physically and or uh, emotionally or psychologically. So you do have good stress that gives you a purpose and is beneficial to you. So in terms of the most important thing or challenges is trust because uh, I've seen where people don't trust and then there's other, uh, I guess, willingness to accept the individual as they are and um, I guess good, effective communication. There's communication, but then there could be bad communication. You know, you can look at look at people's body language, or you you want to when you communicate, you want to it to be effective. Cause you talk to somebody, and they'll they'll not not their head. But then they don't accomplish or receive what you were trying to tell them. And then it's like, uh, can you repeat what you said? And it's like, uh, I, you know, then it's stumbling as to. So you want to get their eye contact so that they can uh, receive in that body language exactly what you're saying. Because sometimes they'll be looking at you and looking right through you. <laughs> So anyway, good, effective communication is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. That does take me to my next question. I see what you're saying. So the next question is, what are the three most important things to have a successful marriage? Love and communication. And I have to say, I have a God in your life, uh, number one, because I, I, I know the both of us were uh, brought up in, Christian environments and um, the Christian principles and so forth, and that was a big thing that tra attracted me to him because I had because I had gone through college, I had met many people and 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 tried to date, and it was uh, I found a lot of times that was missing in in, in the relationships. And when I met him, I, it seemed easy to talk to him, and, and uh, we t even talked about our beliefs, and it that really uh, was infatuating to me. And I one reason why I think I was able to continue to support him in his ideas because of the uh, faith we both had, because to do the things that we uh, ventured to do. We had to have a lot of faith. Because <laughs> uh, we didn't have a whole lot of money, but we had faith. <laughs> and we still, that faith has been the root mm -hmm. and the foundation of our relationship. And that's what I can say about us. Our um, <laughs> faith, um, it surfaced early on in the relationship. And, and you know, I think that's been the glue for us. Mm -hmm. Even though we love each other, you know, we communicate well, most times. <laughs> <laughs> I find the longer you're in a marriage, sometimes you may have to repeat yourself, you know, to explain things because you're growing together. Um, we've grown so much together, you know, being around each other close to 50 years when you include the dating time. Uh, you might take tend to might take some things for granted and you don't want I don't want to do that so we'll back up and say oh I meant this I might have said it's a, you know, but it's always clear to it's always best to clear it up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. and not go to bed angry <laughs> it's another thing we try to a principle from the Bible that we try to live by okay that's mm -hmm. good that's good do you have anything to add what are the three most important things to have a successful marriage? Yeah, well, I think I kind of answered that already, mm -hmm. so I won't uh, rehash that again. Effective communication, trust, and uh, willingness to forgive one another mm -hmm. because we all make mistakes. And willingness to make, do what it takes to make the marriage work 
because a lot of people would want to jump ship for whatever reason. Okay. The next question is, what are three most important topics to talk about before you marry someone? Well, I would say, um, in my <clears throat> estimation, there are three, I'll name three, but I'm sure it's more than three. Mm -hmm. And for sure, one is your likes and dislikes. And that includes bedroom likes and dislikes. Other things that you would want to discuss is to uh, your your faith because you don't want to be unequally yoked and some people will say well I'm gonna change that person well that's I don't know of anybody that was able to change anyone it's easier said than done and so that's the uh, things to discuss obviously it's the likes and dislikes your faith and uh, children mm -hmm. yes the possibility of children like if someone wants to have kids or if they don't want to have kids or like how many kids all of that mm -hmm. yeah, it's John's secret experiment yeah. I was going to add about uh, children do you want children or not do you how many do you want? We, we discussed that. And um, who's going to be the primary disciplinarian as far as the children were concerned? And uh, those were the three main things as far as the children were concerned. And um, let me see what else is when we talked about careers. Um, you said three. Three. It's a th and, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh -huh, so yes. Yeah, you know, and I'll, you, I mentioned about our faith earlier. Mm -hmm. We've always pretty much agreed about mm -hmm. church sure. attendance and so forth. And, and okay. rules, family rules. Mm -hmm. So what children is um, a really big topic. So when it came to that, you all like wanted children clearly like y'all have kids was it um like compromising like how many kids like you want how many kids um you don't want like was it like a royal thing like do you feel like that should be like a non-negotiable for people when it comes to children he told me in the beginning he wanted four and uh, he was an only child so i can understand that i came from a, a big much bigger family so i i I first said I wanted one, and I started thinking about that, and then I, at the, I advanced the number to two. But we ended up, I had two miscarriages, and we ended up with four pregnancies. So I counted those four pregnancies, and I said, well, I've done my part. So we had two live births that lived, okay. and, and we were very happy. and. Um, challenge with those two, you know, the, the parenting and parenthood and all of that, that, you know, we're very pleased how things turned out, but mm -hmm. and, uh, he had his, with the four pregnancies, and I had mine, with two that lived, <laughs> so we, it worked out. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to how you say it, <laughs> but I understand. <laughs> I'm glad he didn't keep on trying yeah, to have more. Uh -huh. You just have to realize that it's a give and take. Hey. So mm -hmm. you, you, you don't always was to have it your way. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But also, <laughs> I'll expound on that is that she she often tells people I was the only child, which is true. However. She wasn't an only child, mm -hmm. but she grew up as an only child. Mm -hmm. I did not grow up as an only child. Mm -hmm. So in my household, for the longest, I was the youngest because my grandmother raised me and mm -hmm. my grandmother raised her. So we had a lot in common. 
but she had brothers and sisters that she elected to stay with her grandma, I think, and the yeah. first grandparents in the, in the what, first grade or something like that. Well, I was grew up with, at that time, a lot of people was, knew us in the neighborhood as brothers and sisters, even, even though they were my uncle. And mm -hmm. So, you know, I caught the lack, I, I caught hell, okay, <laughs> with them. And, uh, but, you know, we, we still have that, uh, had that bond. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I didn't grow up as an only child, but she grew up as an only child. <laughs> Okay, yeah, just make it clear. Uh, I feel like a lot of times now people don't really like to compromise. It's like your way or the highway, their way or that way. So I think um, and children is like a really big thing or whatever about it. So I think um, talking about compromising and how it looks on, um, you know, like different in different relationships is really important um, in a relationship. So this one is just for this just is a fun one, you know, because this generation is always like men should do this women should do this so yeah so the question is who should pay for the first date i'll say whoever could afford it oh okay <laughs> yeah because i mean you can uh you know go dutch as some people say but uh yeah but there's a understanding that it's not uh, etched in stone as people would say, the man needs to pay for the first date. Because at one time, that may have been so, because realistically, women way back in the day could not work or wasn't, they were forbidden to work. Mm -hmm. And so the man had the money. So therefore, men paid for the first date. Mm -hmm. And as women's lib came into vogue, and people began to sprout their wings and things changed. So then women had their money and sometimes it would be prudent if she has a much better paying job than the man that they have talked about it and she may say, well, I'll pay for it and we can don't even worry about it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, that has to be established I think in terms of someone feels, oh, he just munching off of me or whatever the term they want to use. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, in answering your question, whoever could afford it and they agree upon it. Mm, that's interesting. But you said that y'all did Dutch the first time. I think we did Dutch the first, mm -hmm. the first day. Mm -hmm. So you, would you suggest going Dutch then? It's okay because if that's what you have established. Mm -hmm. um, it worked for us. It, it, it was never um, a big issue, you know, the, the uh, date and who's going to pay for the, you know, the, we kind of, that, that we kind of talked about in advance. Mm -hmm. It has always worked out, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. We never that part of we just stated what we could afford, you know. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, in you know, for transparency, I was working part time. She mm -hmm. was working full time, mm -hmm. and I was uh, still a student. Realistically, she was working uh, social worker, and as it turned out, that. If I remember correctly, I bought the tickets to the show. Mm -hmm. She bought the ticket, or she paid for the meal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. We can't come out. Yeah, we didn't say how much this cost, <laughs> what they have, and I pay half, you know. Go so, my new. so then you feel like um, that should go in towards when you're married in a relationship as well. Like, whoever can afford it, go Dutch or anything like that. Like, just whatever works. It doesn't have to be like the man has to pay every time, the woman has to pay every time. That should go into the marriage as well, right? Well, it changed. Oh. Yeah. So, um, with that, what you're saying, do you feel like it goes into the relationship and marriage? The person, 
um, who makes the most money pays to go Dutch. How do you feel like that translates from the first date to the relationship? Now, you said two things. The relationship versus the marriage. Uh-huh. So... Well, I was just like, hopefully the relationship turns into a marriage, so that's what I was trying right, to Right, right. Uh -huh. I mean, and I, what I was going to say in terms of the marriage, it's, uh, you know, then once again, mm, it should be one pot. Mm-hmm. Now, but at the same time, there are other things to consider. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is that uh, one of the things we did was that if when we found out through trial and error, if we had one, everyone writing on the same checking account, mm -hmm. things bump heads and cause particular problems potentially. But also what we ended up doing was having the one pot, but she had her account, which was different. In my account, even though we were on this, each other's account, but that way we made sure that household payments versus personal account would be a difference, and you won't get a bumping of heads and overdrawn and so forth of that nature. You think um, it should change from first date to the relationship or marriage, or how do you feel like? the finances go and play like paying for dates and different things like that. Okay, in the marriage, uh, there are lots of changes that transpired. So, one of the things which I had explained even prior to marriage, it's not that I don't like to pay bills. I didn't like the time it took to sit down, figure out all the, the bills and things. So, it was easy for me to transfer that task over to my husband, he's a mathematician, he like you know, it, it doesn't bother him. It bothered me to the point that, you know, I didn't, I just didn't like having to, I made a lot of mistakes, I'll say like that, with, with the calculation of, the, you know, the bills, the ones that I had, like when I was single, that was always an issue. I just didn't care about the time it took to sit down and pay bills. So I pretty much transferred the bill paying part over to my husband quite willingly. It didn't seem to bother him, if you recall. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I was even at single. I don't mind paying my bills, but I do mind the time it takes to sit down mm -hmm. and do it. So that was not, a, 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 as far as all the, uh, initially as far as all of the household bills were concerned, he took those over almost in the very beginning. I used to pay for my little accounts, but as our marriage has matured on and on, I just give it all to him and he pays all the bills. Mm. Uh, if I'm <laughs> as far as the bill paying. True. At yeah. this point in our life, he yeah. takes care of all the yeah. bills. I can see where the bills are pay being paid, you know, because everything is electronic. So but, exactly. But uh, he is the one that the math is the fun bother him, you know. But if I make a mistake and it throws things off, I just <laughs> I get hysterical about it. Mm -hmm. you know? So uh, that's how we handle it, and it's, it's smooth sailing for me right now, you know. negative way mm -hmm. but it gets done you yeah. know he's he's on it and having having that business mind that he's had he's always he's done the business the same way he takes care of it mm -hmm. and uh, i can do the leg work i can go to the bank and drop deposits off and, and take and go inside and take care of business at the bank because everything is pretty transparent with us that way so mm -hmm. it works for us Yes. As long as we've been married, things have grown to that point. So mm -hmm. it's, it's the way we do it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I was gonna say I like that too. It's like people's strengths and people's yeah. weaknesses too. Yeah. Like knowing that in a relationship is really important. What somebody is strong in, mm -hmm. like hey, you could go do that because mm -hmm. that's just not really my strong suit. Mm -hmm. So that's good to know too. And sometimes your strength, 
becomes a weakness, and then your weakness becomes a strength in, in the longevity of the marriage. Initially, when we first bought the home we're in now, we had a little rule, you take care of the inside, I take care of the outside. But now as things have matured and things have changed, even physically and uh, health-wise, we, uh, he's doing a whole lot of the cooking now. Most of the cooking. He does most of the grocery shopping because of my uh, limited mobility. Mm -hmm. So be prepared for things when they change. You address it and you make the change. And, and still do what you like doing and what he likes doing. And as long as you uh, in include the other one's feelings and their abilities, mm -hmm. then that's how we do it. As if, if it needs changing, we just talk about it and make it happen. Mm, that's mm -hmm. great. Would you like to add anything? Uh, she pretty much summarizes or summarizes it uh, pretty much. Uh, mm -hmm. Just repeat the question again and just make sure I know. Uh, oh, well, it was the same question was, would you pay for the first date? But I just oh, added yeah, that yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah about mm -hmm. the relationship and stuff like yeah. that. But yeah, yeah, that was great. So this is my last question. So we've been talking a lot um, about marriage, about, um, you know, just what it should take and what you all have feel like is successful for and you know this generation this young generation we see a lot of things on social media we see tv shows it's a lot of fake reality but then it's a lot of toxicity as well too so it's like we don't see a lot of people who are married like we don't see that um maybe in our parents maybe we just see it from you know instagram or even tv shows so i wanted to ask y'all um that y'all been married so long and that y'all dated and everything what tips or advice would you give to the younger generation when it comes to dating and like be getting married you know and like becoming one well i'd say that as far as coming one, becoming one and dating and tips is to be willing to accept the individual for who they are, uh, be willing to uh, accept the changes that come with the individual over time and tips, don't rush into getting married. You, we, we often say date for at least four seasons, which is a year, and that way you can get to know each other very well, or should anyway. So it's, you find that you can love a person more over time, and it's like a snowball rolling down a snow-covered hill that just keeps growing and growing. So your love will grow over time, even though you may have uh, very little of love with that individual to begin with. But over time, by sticking to it and uh, having a, your, I'll just keep it real, having your uh, God, your supreme being in the center goes back to a three-fold chord that's not easily broken. So you have to make sure that you're willing to forgive with whenever mistakes occur and be willing to uh, communicate effectively very well. Mm, that's great, I love that. Do you have anything to add? Uh, I put, he said God in the center, I put him at the head. Mm. Mm. And I'll, even though you, if you start out in a relationship where you don't realize that, the sooner you realize that, it helps in a relationship. Because to me, with God first in my life, I love my husband dearly, and he, and he feels the same way about me. He always says, well, God is first. You know, I don't feel like I'm, you know, second to like say to none or anything, mm -hmm. it's just that in our relationship we pray about just about everything. You know, we pray about even I, you know, I pray about even having this interview with you that I say something or do something 
that will help others who may view this. And it's, it might seem like a little simple thing, but I even pray about the simple things that's going to affect us mm -hmm. because we want to be a light. And uh, I, I said, put God first in your lives, even as young people. It would help even young people to meet their goals, personal and professional goals. And you you find that it's a less struggle, even though it might seem like a mountain you're climbing. <laughs> and then slowly get there, and the struggles, life is like that. You will have some struggles. But again, you can fall back on that faith and prayer and be amazed at the, how you come through. And you won't give up. We didn't give up. There were times I may have felt like it. But I was talked back into my sense, you know, real quick. And uh, and very glad I didn't. Because only God knows what, you know, may have happened. And I wouldn't have the happiness and joy and peace that I have now through all the many, many changes that has occurred and has worked out for our good. That's fun. Mm -hmm. We met beautiful people like you. You're younger, <laughs> but we can Thank relate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Try to relate in your way. <laughs> Well, thank you all so much for being a part of my love series, which I'm going to coin Behind the Marriage. Um, we want to congratulate y'all. When are you, when is um, 45? It's going to be 2023. Mm -hmm. So y'all in the comments, just say congratulations on 45 years. <laughs> thank you. You said what? We we receive. Receive. Yes, receive it. Yes, yes. Okay. Continue to work towards. Yes, yes. Forward to even much more. Yes, you know, fifty. Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Health and wealth. Yes, and thank you all so much for being a part of this. I hope you all enjoyed this. Like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next love series episode. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you are notified every time I drop a new video. And also turn all your notifications on. See you in the next video. Bye. Thanks for watching.